Now that we've had an opportunity to look at Spring Boot and why it is a good fit for microservices and also what RESTful services are, we can go in and start thinking about our controller and our project in general. So first of all, let me clean up some things I added in my last demonstration that I don't need anymore. Secondly, just a quick overview of our project and where we are at this point. Enterprise application is a small file that just starts our application up in the Spring Boot way. Controller is the controller part of Model View Controller. This is going to handle things like REST endpoints and also any kind of event handlers that we need from our user interface. And then we also created a DTO using Lombok so that it generates the getters and setters for us. So a, a very early project that we've just started, this is a good place to start putting endpoints in. Now, I normally wouldn't put the endpoint in until I'm ready to do the entire feature, but nonetheless doing it at this early stage helps us to, number one, cement what we just learned and commit it to permanent memory, but number two, think about where we're going to go in this project going forward. So first of all, we have a request mapping and it does not have response entity or response body getting returned. It just has a string getting returned and that's going to return our start page. So that's fine, no problem. What I really want to think about here is the operations that we want to do with this specimen. And let's start an easy one. Let's, let's think about doing a git mapping and we know that we can do a git mapping like so. We can say at request mapping, and then value equals, and then that's the endpoint that we want to hit, so maybe specimen, comma, method equals request uh, method dot get. We put that annotation over a method, but that is admittedly a lot of typing. This line I'm just about to write gives us the exact same thing. We'll say git mapping, alt enter to import that, and then specimen. That's it. A lot easier that way. So we'll get rid of our first annotation and we'll just keep it at git mapping. Now, because we have it annotated to an endpoint, we can really call the method whatever we want. Let's say public, and this is going to be a get, so we're going to return a response entity. We could also get cute and do response body. Well, we might change this later. We'll keep it as response entity for now. Don't need to take any arguments, so open curly and close curly. Uh, let's call it fetch all specimens. Because you notice that we haven't given this a specimen identifier. We're just saying get me specimen, but we're not saying which one. So let's just return all specimens and we'll do alt enter to grab that response entity. And then I'll just return a dummy response entity. Okay, I just put in a dummy response there because we don't yet have any specimens to return or the framework to do it, but we're just marking out some endpoints so that we can think about what we want to create next. So that's going to return all. What if we want to return just one? Well, we can use that same specimen endpoint, but then we can do the little ID trick like this, where we know it's getting a single specimen. So let's change this method to fetch specimen by ID. Then we'll give it a string ID identifier. But let's also give this the at path variable annotation and associate it with ID. So I know that was a lot of typing, let's connect the dots. This is an endpoint and after the endpoint, the user can optionally specify a unique identifier of a specimen. If so, that will go right here between these slashes. The path variable is gonna take that value from the URL or from the endpoint essentially, and it's going to stuff it into this ID parameter that we have here, and then we can use that to go fetch a specific specimen. So, two different git mappings and a very similar endpoint, uh, which is fine. So, git means read data. Now, post means create something new. So, let's create our post. This one might be a little bit more involved. So, at post mapping, and again, you could do a request mapping for this and just say method equals post, but post mapping is a shortcut that'll make this go a little bit easier. Now, an important note, you notice the git mappings just have something in quotes in the parentheses. In post mapping, we're going to want to set several properties. So if we only set one property, it assumes that's the endpoint and it assigns it to a, an attribute called value. If we're going to add multiple properties, we have to specify 
which values go with which variables essentially. So I have to say value equals and then say in quotes slash specimen. And then after that, I'll say consumes equals and then application slash JSON. And that's a slash on the question mark key on the United States keyboard. And then comma and then produces equals and then also application slash JSON. And then we'll put this over public specimen, create specimen. Now, since we're creating something new, we need to receive that something new. So let's add a parameter variable here of type specimen, and the variable will be specimen. But how can that get given to us if this is an endpoint? Well, remember there's an annotation called request body. And that basically means you're going to be receiving the specimen as a JSON representation and then request body can use some naming conventions to parse through that JSON and populate this specimen object right here. So ideally what we would do is create the specimen and return the specimen. Uh, since we're just stubbing things out, I'm just going to return the same specimen that was passed in to us. Finally now, let's make a delete mapping endpoint. Delete, remember that's one of our HTTP actions, one that didn't get a whole lot of use until RESTful services came out, but now it does have a very good use, and that is we need to delete something. So let's give it an endpoint with an ID. We'll say slash specimen, slash ID, and then slash, and it basically means delete the specimen at this location, delete the specimen with this unique identifier. So we'll make a new method, public response entity, delete specimen. And then remember, we're going to need to do the path trick since that ID is passed to us in a path variable, just like this mapping up above. So no problem, at path variable, and we'll say ID, and then string ID. And a bit of a boilerplate return, as we saw before, is we're just stubbing out our endpoints. If you take a look at this, we've defined two fetch methods, and then a post or a create new method, and then a delete method. So we don't have any updates, because right now I don't have a good use case for that. But nonetheless, we do have three out of the four CRUD operations. Create from the post. Fetch from our two git mappings. One will fetch all, the other will fetch by ID. And then finally, delete. One other thing worth noticing here. If you look at each of these methods, they're all named uniquely, and they're all named with a verb and then noun. So fetch all is the verb, specimens. Fetch, specimen by ID. Create, specimen, delete, specimen. So verb and noun that it's acting on. They're doing four very different things. But if you look at the endpoint, they're all essentially the same. So if I hit the endpoint specimen, how does it know which of these to go to? Well, there are two things it's going to look at. Number one, what is the endpoint? And does that endpoint contain an ID? If the endpoint contains an ID, it can narrow it down to one of these two that indicates it's expecting an ID. The other thing it's going to look for is the verb, get, post, delete, or one of the others. That essentially is a differentiator that determines which of these method calls is going to be called. So between the look of the endpoint with the endpoint name and an optional identifier and the verb, it's able to have a unique way to get to each one of these different methods we've created. So you see here, it's not just the endpoint, but also the HTTP actions that decide which method gets called. This is just the start. A whole lot more we're going to build onto it. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.